some of you may or may not know that uh, that I actually worked as a professional psychic medium for many years. I actually um, was listed. I don't, I don't remember the organization that listed it anymore, but I was listed somewhere in some organization as one of the country's top 50 psychics, which I kind of find humorous because you're all top 50 psychics. But I will tell you that I've even had my brain studied because of my intuitive abilities. And that's not meant as a boast. That's really meant as a surprising. That was a very surprising twist and turn in my life. I am first and foremost, a scientist by training. I love science. I'm a big fan of science. I love research. And you give me a scientific study to read and I am happy. That is how I like to spend my Saturdays, perusing data. Um, and when I was about in my mid thirties, uh, I had moved to Sedona, Arizona after being led there by responding to my sacral and very quickly found myself to be uh, broke and struggling to raise my children by myself as my marriage sort of fell apart, which is a very typical thing that happens when you move to those kinds of consciousness hotspots. And uh, this sort of falling apart of my life left me in a really difficult situation. And I had really kind of two choices. And the first choice was to go back to work as a nurse, which I could not in any way, shape or form get my sacral to respond to. And the other option was to big question mark. I didn't know what else I was going to do. I knew I didn't want to go back to work as a nurse. And I was really in a dire, dire situation where I was broke, so broke that I did not have the money for rent and rent was due in two days. And I got an opportunity in that sort of 11th hour, a friend of mine said, you should go down to the Sedona Center for the the Sedona Center for the New Age. I should have posted a picture of this because I go by there every once in a while when I go back to Sedona and it's kind of interesting to be there. But somebody said, go to Sedona for the Center for the New Age. They're hiring. I thought, well, okay. My sacral said yes. My brain was like, what the, right? But my sacral said yes. So I went to the Sedona Center for the New Age. I sat down with the owner and she hired me on the spot to work as a psychic. Now, I had never worked as a psychic before, but I, Started working as a psychic the very next day. And interestingly enough, the very next day after doing a couple of psychic sessions, which as it turned out to me, were very much like doing nursing. I don't know if any of you are nurses, but a lot of nursing involves simply just listening to people with your heart and giving them some insights into their situation and their background and what they can do, giving them some choices. So I sat and I listened to people with my heart for a day. And in that short day, I actually made enough money to pay my rent the next day, which was a huge relief, pay my kid, get my kids some food. Um, and that kind of was the initiation into my very strange and scary start as a psychic medium. It was not a career that I was very comfortable with. I know that people took what I said to heart and were take, that they took that information very, very seriously. And it made me very nervous that people took my information so seriously. So I really approached it with a deep, deep sense of responsibility. I did not want to mislead people. And certainly one of the things that I learned in doing this work, and this goes back to what I was saying in my presentation, is that there's no hard, fixed fate. There are certainly some parts of your life that are written into the destiny of who you are. And those events are drawn into your life as part of your destiny. And certainly if you are a fifth or six line profile, you will have more of a fixedness to some of the events that happen in your life. Your, your destiny is a little more fixed than, say, somebody who is a third line profile who has a lot of exploring and experimentation in your process. But there's always choice. You always have choices on how you're going to act, react, create that influence what comes next. And so when we are looking at intuition, we're not looking at, oh, next year on May the 4th, you're going to win the lottery. But rather, we're looking at what patterns and habits do you have? And how are those patterns and habits potentially going to influence what gets created in the future? And if you have a desire for a different outcome in the future, what can you change in the moment to craft a different outcome? That's actually part of intuition is knowing sensing, feeling, which infra bits of information are aligning with the current patterns that are taking me down this path, or 
which bits of information might be helping me shift my pattern so that I can create a different outcome. And very little, I find, is actually fixed and rigid. You can change your life on a dime if you change the patterns. And part of what we explore when we're looking at patterns, part of what we're exploring when we're looking at patterns and intuition is how do we change the patterns? How do we not only change the patterns, but clear away all of that gunk sometimes in our conditioning field that is keeping us from seeing more clearly what is really for our greatest and highest good.